All right. Welcome to the Covis Codex, the podcast that wants to know who you are, not so much what you do, but starts off by asking, who are you and what do you do? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, my name is Jimmy Winter. Uh, I am a product manager at Huddle. Been there since April of last year. Uh, product manager for the Mobile Squad and for Front End Engineering Squad. So you're in charge of all the uh, iPhone, Android stuff? Yeah. Um, we, my squad's role is to kind of usher the other squad, so basketball squad, football squad, to kind of make their jobs easier to build for mobile. So cool. we're just kind of the uh, pipeline to get things going. All right. Well, now I'm going to ask you some personal questions, hopefully oh, no. try to make you cry. Um, I cry very easily. Awesome. This is good. I love that. It's good for ratings. <laughs> uh, Where did you grow up? Grew up here in Omaha. Um, Millard, born and raised there, uh, middle school, moved to Gretna, graduated Gretna, class of 2000, and I'm still here. Have you ever lived anywhere else? No, uh, I used to work for a company in New York, and I would travel out there a whole lot. Um, that was in 99 and 2000. I was pretty young. Uh, spent a few months there, but never anything permanent. Cool. Do you like New York? Love it. Yeah, probably my second favorite city behind San Diego. Nice. Mm -hmm. I've never been to San Diego. It's beautiful. I'd love to go. It's super nice every day. All right. Uh, next question. Who has been the most influential person in your life? Hmm. I would say personally, my dad. Wonderful man. Very kind, compassionate, just good, good role model all around. So I definitely try to model what I do just based on what I've seen him do. Um, professionally, there's a guy named Philip Kaplan I admire a lot. He used to run a blog called Fucked Company in the early 2000s, and it was just a document of all of the dot-com flameouts. I, I just like the attitude he had in it. Uh, he's began several companies since. Um, Blippi was one, uh, Adbright was one, and he just sits down, codes the prototypes himself, and goes from there. So he's still active? Very active still, yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Um, what was the best concert you've ever been to? It's like picking a favorite child. Uh, I would say my favorite was Rocket from the Crypt, July 19th, 2001, at Knickerbockers in Lincoln. Wow. Yep. They're my favorite band of all time. Um, I'd seen them kind of peripherally at West Fair at some Edge Fest or Rock Fest or some dumb festival like that. But it was the first time I ever saw the band in a club. And a huge fan. I've been wanting to see them for a long time. So blew my mind. Still your favorite band? Still my favorite band. Um... Saw them five times in the past year. Never in Omaha. Wow. Never seen them in town. Seen them in New York, D.C., San Diego, Denver, Chicago, Lincoln, Council Bluffs. But never, never in my home city. That's that's weird that they picked Council Bluffs over Omaha. It was at the festival. <laughs> yeah, but okay. of all places. Oh, that's a you're a diehard fan there. If you're following them around, what else am I gonna do with my time? That's great. <laughs> um, what is the scariest thing you've ever done? Hmm. Done a lot of dumb things. It wasn't scary at the time, but in hindsight, it's scary and very dumb. When I worked at the company in New York, we worked uh, right on the edge of Chinatown. And we're on like the 22nd floor. We had this office, but we also had the office next door to it. We needed to get there because that's where all the development stuff was at. This one was unlocked. Didn't have the keys here. The windows were unlocked on the outside. So, like a dummy, I'm not sure why we did this, but we went out on the deck and jumped from one deck to the next deck, which is really close, but still straight down. Right. Uh, tremendous distance. Had you just watched Mission Impossible? No, or I was something? Just, it's dumb. <laughs> I was like 17 or 18. And, you know, you do things without thinking. Right. Of course, I still do that nonstop, but. <laughs> awesome. Wow. <laughs> that is uh, pretty scary. Um, if you could go back in time and change one thing, what would it be? Anything? Anything. Anything at all? Anything at all. I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> what? Uh, I read a short story in high school. It's something about the butterfly effect. Or right. Anyways, it's where a guy goes back in time, hunts a dinosaur. And they have it set up so that you hunt a dinosaur and you kill it right before the dinosaur was about to die anyway. So there's really no long-term effects. But in this book, a guy steps off the path, steps on a butterfly, comes back to modern day, Hitler's in charge, all kinds of weird things are happening. Um... So I don't want to change anything. You, you wouldn't change anything no, because I'm, you're afraid of what might Well, ripple. you know what? Things aren't that bad right now. Okay. Things are pretty good, so. That's good. No. Okay. Maybe, maybe I would have like, worked a bit harder in high school, but I say that, but 
Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Had too much fun. <laughs> too much fun. Yeah. Um, what is one surprising thing about you? Nothing. Nothing surprising? Nothing surprising about me. I'm um, surprised to learn that you jumped out, out, out of a deck like that. Oh, me too. I'm, so, I'm surprised <laughs> at myself <laughs> looking back at surprising. it. surprising. One surprising thing about me. Um, I'm a huge Howard Stern fan, but I think a lot of people know that. Mm-hmm. Um, surprising, surprising. I didn't. You didn't know that? No. <laughs> the power of Howard. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, I really love Randy Newman. I'm a huge Randy Newman fan as well. Who's Randy Newman? Um, he wrote a song called Short People. It was a hit in like 1982. Wrote a song called I Love L.A. Uh, he's done a ton of Disney soundtracks. I'm not a big fan of Disney soundtracks, but his solo stuff is really good. He's a singer-songwriter, um, almost all piano-based. So it's, I'm about rock and roll punk rock dudes. So You're really into music. I like music a lot. <laughs> really into music. Um, okay, so what's the favorite, your favorite movie or your favorite book? My favorite movie is There Will Be Blood. Wonderful movie. It came out a couple of years ago long about um, the oil industry right, and yeah. its rise. Uh, also a big fan of Big Lebowski, Dumb and Dumber, those things of course. Um, my favorite book Read a bunch of business books lately. You know, just that's kind of the thing now. Mm-hmm. Uh, recently, I really uh, the, the hard thing about hard things. That that's what it's called. Basically, it follows uh, Horowitz basically from founding a company, building a company, uh, and joining Netscape with um, Mark Andreessen to running a company after that. And a lot of business books say. You should try to manage in this style. You should try to do this. You should try to do that. Do that. But I like what he does is he takes out actual examples. I had a manager. Here's here's what was happening. Here's how we handled it. Here's what he talked about. Actually, you know, real hard world examples of the hard things about growing a business. Good. So it's got some actual case studies, not, Lots. not just, you know, mm-hmm. empty uh, advice. Mm-hmm. Awesome. If you could instantly master a new skill, what would it be? Anything, huh? I like to cook. It would be cool if I could be a lot better at cooking. Um, I want to buy a house one someday. So it would be cool if I could learn how to do all that. Be a handyman? Handyman type stuff, which I'm not handy It's very difficult. Whatsoever. Don't ever try to do any pipes without, you know, a professional. Really? I'm just like, what, watch a, a five-minute YouTube video and start unscrewing things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll end up with a mess. Yeah. Uh, since you're so much into music, mm-hmm. um, do you ever karaoke? Uh, I hate to karaoke. You hate karaoke? I hate, oh, I don't mind watching it. Like, that's okay. But I can't stand in front of people and sing. I did one karaoke song ever. It just bummed me out, man. <laughs> bummed me out. Just that bad of a singer? I or? mean, yeah, I'm not terrible. But everybody thinks they're so much better than they actually are, and they get up there and are tone deaf. And I'd be up there, I'd be tone deaf. I like to do public speaking. I've always enjoyed doing that. Public singing... Not so much. No, not, not, not my thing. Right, fair enough. Um, how would your friends describe you? Awful. No. Um, <laughs> funny, I hope. Uh, generous, I think. I hope. I try to be generous. Um, nice. Good dude. Good dude. Lex Rocket from the Crypt. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. A lot. All right, now a twist. Um, how would your enemies describe you? That's a good question. It's a very good question. Let me think about this one for a second. How would my enemies describe me? Bullheaded? Sometimes overly persistent? Funny and generous? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, uh, second to last question. This is going too quick. Right? We need some more. Let's, let's slow it down. I've got a lot of things to say to the world. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Uh, what is your favorite party game? Favorite party game? Hmm. It could be a board game, mm-hmm. or a card game, or a drinking game. Mm-hmm. Favorite party game? All right, this is dumb, but it's so easy, and it's so fun. Also music-related. Done with a ton of friends. Basically, say, you and I are at a party, and there's a bunch of people here. I'll name a band. I will say, Hot Snakes. Okay? Mm-hmm. Then you have to take the last letter of that band name and name a band that starts with the letter S. Let's try a few. Okay. S to you. S to me. Samantha Fox. X to me, huh? Good luck. Wow. 
I mean, we, I've, I've played this game. I've got some X examples. Uh, there's a band called X. Like, their name is just X. Now, the fun part about this game is you pin with, like, a bunch of, like, dirty indie, indie people, like, you know, dirty hipsters. <laughs> um, you've got to kind of have a group consensus as, it's okay, a, X like is an actual band. band. Yes, you're not right. just naming things. Now, here's a, here's a question. I said X, right? Uh-huh. So, would a band like The X's, which is just The with two X's? I would say no. no I think T's got to be The, yeah. Okay. Which is an annoying rule, but All right. otherwise it opens a board too wide for other band names. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right. Sounds of fun. Yeah. Another game I like playing, uh, not so much a party game, but it's a... Like, actually, I've played it at parties before. I'll pull up a 90s alt-rock radio station on my phone. Or just like, you know, a channel on series or whatever. And we'll always sit around and to play a song. And what you have to do is you have to name the artist and title. And you gotta be the first person to do it. And there can't be any ums. I can't say this is this is Green Day. Uh skip it because you can count. It's gotta be Green Day, time of your life. And that sounds a fun. Huh. You just best first person to seven. I I've uh, I've been around you while you're programming. Mm-hmm. And you do that, like, all the time. Since I was a kid, I've been doing that. I don't know why. So you'd be a great contestant on, like, Name That Tune or something. Well, only, like, for 90s all rock. <laughs> yeah. Nothing else. Like, nothing country. Nothing, uh, even, like, oldies. That'd be terrible. Right. A classic rock, I'd be awful. Just, <laughs> just between, like, 1992 and... 1997. Very specific. Alt rock. Time window, very specific yeah. genre. Be very good there, but otherwise, uh, I okay. feel miserably. Oh, I know who to call when I'm on the. <laughs> who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, have you ever broken any bones or had any stitches? Yeah. I was a dumb kid. I jumped off everything, I launched off everything. Uh, I broke my knee, this knee right here, playing Guitar Hero. <laughs> what? How do you break your knee playing Guitar Hero? <laughs> Um, I was just like doing this, just, you know, playing guitar, and I twisted wrong. I don't know, and I, like, my, my foot didn't pivot or something, and I fall to the ground. And it was too Texas Flood, like this super slow song in the game, so it was <laughs> extra embarrassing. So, um, Everyone's do you want to hear the whole story? It's a good up, story. Get up. Yeah. yeah, that's what I heard. Of course. Get up. Walk it off. And, uh, and there, and my knees, like this, my leg is just kind of bent. I finally get, like, straightened out. Then I can't bend it anymore. So go to the doctor the next day. Uh, they x-ray it. You're fine. Here's like a bunch of pain pills. Go go have fun. Relax a little bit. I go back a week later and I say, Doc, I still can't move my leg and it's super swollen still. Uh, they x-ray it again. Now you're fine. A couple days later, nothing going on. So they sent me through an uh, MRI. Or CAT scan, I don't know. One of those big machines you lay in. Uh, nothing's wrong. So he goes, you know what, I'm just, just going to need a physical therapy. You're not my problem anymore. I'm going to pass you off. Go to physical therapy, like a Thursday morning or something like that. And the doctor says, hey, new patient. I just like to get an x-ray to see what's going on. Gets an x-ray. He comes in. He says, Jimmy, your knee's broken. We have to do surgery tomorrow. And what happened uh, was, you know, leg bends like this. The end of the bone right here, it just snapped off somehow. Wow. So they had to nail it back in. And all those tests didn't show it. All those tests didn't show it. Wow. Strange. Good thing you were persistent. Yeah. No, <laughs> it wasn't my persistence. Yeah, it was this <laughs> leg that one bend. They were going to have a choice. So. Uh, one time, I broke both my arms falling off a jump, jungle gym. My first day out of kindergarten. Well, it really ruined the summer. Wow. Mm-hmm. So you had to wear, like, a special... Uh, the casts were only, like, below the elbow. So that was nice so I could still bend everything. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Anything else? Any stitches? Lots of stitches. Um... Baseball tryouts in high school. Guy slid into me. Cut my knee. I had to get a bunch of stitches there. Fell in a bathtub when I was a, like a baby. Got stitches on my chin. Um, one time I, I was next to a truck and I grabbed it when it was moving. Like, oh no, I was holding on to it and then uh, the guy tapped the gas. And like sliced my hand open and had to get stitches there. Done a lot of dumb things. Were you on a skateboard or something? Or? No, I was um, just uh, like picking something up on the outside of it. Oh, okay. And he didn't know I was holding on to it. I was going to hop right back in. Cool. Yep. All right. How about you? Uh, yes. Really? A, a ton. But this isn't my interview. All right. This is my interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this name is going to be, or, or this question is going to be weird, because you have a really cool name. 
Mm. Like Jimmy Winner. Thank you. Like, that's just an awesome name. Mm-hmm. Um, you could be like a, a, a superhero. Like that, uh, not that, me. That too, freezes people too, too or weak. something. <laughs> <laughs> Whose leg breaks yeah. when, when he's <laughs> touching plastic like, guitars. Like Rumble is my power. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the question is, uh, if you had to pick a new name, mm-hmm. what would it be? If I had to pick a new name, huh? Mm-hmm. When I was born, my name was almost Jackson Anthony, but it wasn't. <laughs> Not saying I want that name. Jackson Anthony. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. If I could pick a new was it, name. W- were you saying like it would have been Jackson Anthony Winner? Yes. Uh, I'm, actually, <laughs> okay. I'm actually James Andrew. James Andrew. Yeah, but I've been called Jimmy since I was a little kid. Huh? Okay. Every now and then I get called Jim, my close friends. Uh, if I could change my name, I would change my name to Greg Nelson. Greg Nelson. <laughs> it's just a guy I work with, I like. Oh. Then I just have a great name. So, Greg, I want your name. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming for your name. Do you have anything to pitch? Do I have anything to pitch? Uh, not really. I've been working on an app with a friend of mine, Andy Peters. You, you know him well. Oh, yeah. For the past, uh, past year or so. We're going to launch it someday. Does it have a name? It's called Swoop. <laughs> it's W-O-O-P. Um, it'll be a while before we launch it. We're just doing beta tests right now to see, see if it works. You know, kind of minimum, minimum viable product. Testing out our assumptions. Changing things quite a bit. Making sure we're on the right path. I'm a product manager by trade. Are you, are you pretty happy with where you're going? Love it. Yeah. 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 Getting really good feedback. It's changed quite a bit, which is good. And, you know, that's just based on things we've heard. Awesome. So look for it. Maybe this summer. Maybe late spring. Yeah, we'll keep an eye out, uh, and we'll advertise it when it comes out so cool. people can see it. Cool. Well, thanks, Jimmy Winter, for being on this uh, podcast, and thank everyone for uh, watching and listening. Thanks for watching the Covis Codex. I'm Skid Viss, and I hope you enjoy watching this show as much as I enjoy making it. If you'd like to see more episodes like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and help spread the word by liking and sharing on Twitter and Facebook. Also... I'm always looking for new questions and guest ideas, so please feel free to post your suggestions in the comments section. Thanks again. Peace out.